What actually happened to you in Scalis? I mean, during the attack and... Well, you know. That's a long story. Not a very cheerful one. Are you sure you want to hear it now? I do. All right, then. It was a day like any other. Another ordinary day in my ordinary life. woke at first light, before the others. I like those kind of mornings best. When the first rays of sunshine quickly drive away the nighttime cold. Hello, you. Come here. And the breeze carries the scent of dew-covered grass and the bloom of spring. I wanted to get my chores done before the rest of the household was up. And this morning seemed made for that very purpose. Right, better get to work. I have to feed the hens, weed the garden, feed Tinker. I'd better get it all done before Papa is up. That should do it. The garden is looking how it should again.
checky, checky, checky. Hey, hey, you are, girls. Fill your beaks. I must bring Tinka a piece of meat. That'll be a nice treat. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. What do you need, Papa? Go up and see the blacksmith. He made some nails for me. Here's some coin. All right. Anything else while I'm at it? No, unless you want to stop off at the market and buy some supplies. And before you go, wake Samuel. The boy's still lying in bed and won't stir. He ought to follow your example and Stebor's. You two don't have to be pushed to work. Well, at least he's still better than that good-for-nothing's Bishek. The lazy wretch. A helper like that isn't worth a damn. If it weren't for his father, God rest his soul, I'd have thrown him out on his ear long ago. Now, father, you shouldn't be so hard on Zvitek. You know he hasn't had an easy life. And who has, girl? That's no excuse for laziness. You could tell him to get his ass to work, too. Right. Go for nails, send Samuel and Zabishek to work, if it's at all possible. Aye, just so. Oh, and Teresa, once you've done all your chores for the day, I have a little surprise for you. Really? Now you've got me curious, Pa. I'll be on my way then. Pa says you're idle, and if you carry on like that, he'll throw you out. Ah! Why would he do that? Then he'd be left only with Stibor, and Stibor is not going to break his back working either. Listen, Zbyshek. Pa's not happy with you, and if he says you're idling, you'd better make a bit of effort. I'm only telling you for your own good. You wouldn't want to lose your job now, would you? Lot are always going on about work as if it was a blessing from heaven. All right, all right. I'll get to work. Anything for a bit of peace. That's more like it. You'll see it doesn't hurt. <laughs> God be with you. How's it going, Stebor? Do you need anything? 
I'll just be hanging around the mill today, carrying sacks of flour and that. And in the afternoon, I'll go and check the fish trap. And me and Pa have some matters to attend to in the evening. What matters? The Millers and their secret matters. Aye, oh, something like that. Sammy, get up. It's broad daylight and the birds are singing. Yeah, yeah, I'm up, I'm up. Have a bite to eat before going to the mine. All right, Ma. You don't have to treat me like a child. Looks like it'll be nice today, eh? Hmm. I could go to the pond fishing. But you have to go to work. I know. But maybe I can slip off after lunch. There'll be no slipping off. You know very well Namoy has been complaining about you. Or about dropping that pail on Tonda's head. It was an accident. Not the first accident you've had, though, was it? Well, there you go, then. If I leave early, nothing will happen to anyone. And you can cook the fish for lunch tomorrow. You silly sod. All you ever do at the pond is lie around. The only thing you'll catch is more trouble from the mine master when he finds out. Well, if you're not a child, you can sort it out yourself with Namoy. Don't I always? Even the horses are more fragrant than you. Honest work doesn't stink, you good for nothing. Perhaps not, but you stink to high heaven. You lazy wretch. You're full of talk, and yet you haven't two groschen to rub together. God, you should you talk. Sister. All you have is what falls from your master's table. Ha! Huh. Look at you, thin as a rake from never having a decent meal, and still bloated from nothing but pride. At least I can read and write and... and think for myself. But what use is that to you? To sit bare-arsed in the cold and read? You pile of manure. Should I mug out stables like you? quarrelling about here, for the love of God. This pipsqueak here claims studying is as hard a job as working in the stables. I most certainly did not, because study is of course much harder work than mucking out a bit of horse manure. See? That's what I'm talking about, and yet it's as clear as day. Hang on, what's as clear as day? That study is as hard as mucking out stables, if not harder. A man who doesn't work with his hands is an idler and a good for nothing. Am I wrong? I'd like to ask you a couple of questions before answering. You're a scholar. What are you doing in Scalitz? I'm on my way to Sassau with letters. This ingrate here is stabling my horse overnight before I continue my journey. What does your work involve, student? I'm no student, but a baccalaureus, having completed the trivium of the Faculty of Liberal Arts in the University of Prague. Grammar, rhetoric, and dialectics are my work. While this yokel wouldn't be capable even of learning Latin, Father arranged that I will serve as a teacher in Kuttenberg for two years before returning to the university to attend the quadrivium. 
to teach and be taught, that is real work. You serve Sir Radzik at the castle, don't you, Master Groom? Aye, and Sir Radzik is very pleased with my work. I can be rightly proud of what I do, and I bring home a nice wage too. The children are fed, and the wife can buy herself a nice scarf from time to time. I'm satisfied with my lot. How many people can say that? What's so hard about your job, Master Groom? That's real work. Not like this parasite here does. On my feet from dawn till dusk, feeding, mucking out, grooming. By evening, I'm dead on my feet. I'm doing something real, see? Something that makes sense. Horses are needed for work, for the lords, for riding out, even in times of war. And someone has to care for those horses. All this good-for-nothing can do is mouth off. But he'd never be able to do a real job. That's all I need to know. You're both right. But not one of you has a grain of sense. Work is work, whether it's done with your hands or your heart. Ah, rhetoric worthy of Socrates himself, and out of the mouth of a woman. I bow to you, good maiden. The professors of Prague could learn a thing or two from you. Are you saying this good-for-nothing here who has to beg for his beer at the tavern is my equal? But to hell with it. I won't argue. How are you, Teresa? new, Fritz? I don't know. Oh, actually, I do know. There's gonna be a dance this evening. Are you going? Maybe. I've got a lot to do still. They say it's gonna carry on tomorrow too. And they'll be roasting a pig. Can't miss that. So I heard. I wonder how come Sir Radzig allowed it? No, it wasn't his lordship's idea. It was Master Faithfars. Master Tobias? Why would he do that? I don't know. Maybe he just wants to show off his wealth. I'd have roast pig and dancing every evening if I had his coin. Greetings. How are things, Matthew? Teresa, it's unusual to see you here. Come to see the eighth wonder of the world, have you? <laughs> what would that be now? Fritz. Working? Well, that's a sight you don't see every day. <laughs> I'd say that's the pot calling the kettle black. You don't look too busy yourself. Why overdo it? Jesus was a carpenter too, but how many beams do you think he made, eh? Matthew! That's blasphemy! No, oh, it's only a harmless joke. You don't have to look at me like the parish priest did at Kunesh, you know, when he spewed over his pew. Ugh! Don't even remind me! Well, I'd better be going. Work to do. You know? Don't ever do it now. Teresa, great to see you.
You're Honka. What's up? I was asking around for you. There's something we have to talk about. Are you going to the dance this evening? I'd like to go and have a look, if I have time for it. Why? Do you want to borrow my dress? No, no. Nothing like that. I've got a dress, but I don't want to end up dancing on my own, if you know what I mean. You want me to find you a dancing partner? No, not quite. I've already picked one. Mm, let me guess. Matthias? I. Who else? So, what's the problem? Just go and tell him. You've had your eye on him since the Harvest Festival. Surely you must have noticed by now. He hasn't. I'm at a loss what to do. So you'd like Matthias to take you to the dance, but you don't want to tell him? That's right. How in heaven's name do you want to do it then? Easy. You're going to steal his lucky dice. What? How is that supposed to help, for Christ's sake? If you can get your hands on it without him noticing, he'll be looking everywhere for it. He'll be wandering around saying to himself, Where did I put that damned dice? And then... I'll turn up. God be with you, Matthias. You didn't by any chance lose your dice. And he'll say... Aye, Johanka, I did. Where on earth did you find it? Oh, I found it near the tavern. You know there's going to be a dance there this evening. And then he'll finally get the message. Oh, the dance. Yes. Johanka, wouldn't you like to go with me? Of course. I'd love to go with you, Matthias. Thank you for asking. Then he'll take me by the hand and he'll look... <clears throat> Never mind that. Um... Well, that's how it's going to help, more or less. You painted a very pretty picture, no doubt. But do you think it'll really work? I'm absolutely sure it will. Why don't you just steal the dice yourself? And if he caught me doing it? You think he'd go dancing with me then? Except maybe to the bailiff. But you... Well, you're a miller's daughter and... Well, you know what they say. Right. We're all a pack of thieves. I might have known. All right then. I'll help you. Thank you, Tess. Bring the dice to me as soon as you have it. Hang on though. How am I supposed to find it? He was saying at the tavern yesterday that he keeps it in his trunk when he's not going to play. Go and see Fritz first. I heard he's always got some lockpicks, whatever he wants them for. Anyway, no doubt he can show you how to use one. Me? Pick locks? Yo, Honka, aren't you going a bit too far? Well, then maybe you can get hold of his key somehow. But whatever you do, don't get caught. And not a word to Matthias, for the love of God. How are you?
Good day. Tell me, Matthias, what do you think of Johanka? Johanka? Yeah, she's a nice girl. She helped the lads and me out of a few scrapes. Actually, she's always been good to us. Why do you ask? Yohonka's a very nice girl, all right. Wouldn't you like to go and have a beer with her? Beer? You know Yohonka doesn't drink. I don't know what you're up to, but I'm not interested. I suppose you'd like to go to the dance this evening? If you have someone to go with, you could ask Yohonka. If you do, I'll dance with you too. <laughs> no offense, but if I wanted to dance with you, then I'd invite you, not your hunker. Besides, I don't want to ask anyone. I'd rather just get drunk with the lads. I was just curious, that's all. Good day, Teresa. Come right up, good people. Herbs for your kitchen, as well as health giving decoctions. Listen, Fritz, I hear you know something about opening locks without a key. Sure. All you have to do is charge at the door. Shoulder first. I don't want to break down a door. I want to pick a lock. Ah, you want a lock pick then? Shh, not so loud. Well, I can give you some. But you know what they say. Not even a pig gun's for free. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Who says that? Ah, uh, mostly me. And everyone thinks it's fucking clever, so bugger off. Will you teach me how to pick a lock? Sure, for a few groschen. Are you yanking my pizzle? I can't get drunk for that. More. A school like that is worth its weight in gold, you know. Hey, Fritz. How about giving me a couple of lock picks for free, eh? After all, we've known each other since we were little. All right. But just this time. If you break them, don't expect to get more for free. Just two? You said a couple, didn't you?
people. Herbs for your kitchen, as well as health-giving decoctions. Good health to you, Teresa. God's blessings. What's new in the village? There's to be a dance this evening. Again? Can we not find some other way to enjoy ourselves for a change? Harvest festival, Pentecost festival, dances, church, and dances again. What else would we do for fun? I heard they have combat tournaments in Rate sometimes. The men put on shining armour and folk can watch them battering each other. That must be lovely to watch. Why can't we have something like that once in a while? After all, Sir Radzik is the royal hetman. But for a tournament, you need knights. We don't have enough here in Skalitz. Ah, but Sir Hanish's tournay in Rate is even for commoners. Even our fellows could enrol there. Oh my god, don't say that too loud. I can just imagine how my brothers would be tripping over each other to enrol. They wouldn't be the only ones, would they? How about that Henry? He's always waving that wooden sword around like you'd think he was getting ready to go on crusade. But there's an interesting thought now. Which of our fellows do you think would win? I don't know who'd win, and I don't much care. It's bad enough the men folk brawling in the tavern without getting weapons into their hands. But, Teresa, it's just a bit of fun. You don't have to take things so seriously. Anyway, enough about tourneys. I must be on my way. Take care. Here, enjoy it. God save Teresa. Bianca, how come you're up so bright and early? Papa has me running around from dawn till dusk. You know how it is. Indeed I do. I'm glad you're here, Tess. You've got to help me with something. But first... Can you go and see Henry for me? He's at the sheepfold by the stockade, as usual. Oh, playing around with wooden swords again? Aye, he's getting ready for the life of a mighty warrior. Well, at least we know he'll be able to protect you from outlaws with wooden swords. <laughs> oh well, boys and their games. Listen, would you bring him a beer for me? But why don't you bring it yourself? If Pa saw me running after Henry, he'd tend my hide. But I can't leave him dry in this heat. All right, I'll bring the bear to him. Thanks. And don't forget to tell him it's from me. Everyone knows all the beer in Scallops is from you and your Pa. <laughs> you know what I mean. And listen, Tess. Once you've given him the beer, come back to me again. Meanwhile, I'll make an excuse to Pa. I need you to go somewhere with me. But I'll tell you all about it after. Run along before the beer gets warm. Here.
God be with you, Henry. Mind you don't get hurt. Good day, Teresa. Are you talking to me? I don't see anyone else here, so... I brought you a beer. I'd say you'd need it after a hard battle. Ah, great. It's as hot as Pa's Forge out here today. That's very sweet of you to get me a beer. Actually, Bianca sent it. Her pa doesn't want her to come here. Ah, I see. I'll make it up to her this evening. I don't want to know how. How come you're training on your own today? You're usually here with that vagabond. What's his name? Vanyek. And he's not a vagabond. He's a wayfaring combat master. Well, it looks like he's off wayfaring somewhere else today. Yeah. <laughs> More likely sleeping off last night's boozing. Actually, since I've no opponent today, wouldn't you like to have a go? I mean, a bit of swordplay. I could teach you. Me? Swordplay? Sure. Why not? All right, then. I accept your challenge, young sir. But I must warn you, I can swat a mouse with a broom with my eyes closed. Yeah, I knew you had the heart of a warrior. Let's go, then. Come on, then. Show me what you're made of. Whoever is the first to hit the other ten times is the victor. What if I hurt you, though? Ah, uh, don't worry. I can handle it. Thank you. Don't go easy on me, Hal. <laughs> ah, very good. <laughs> That is hardly chivalrous behavior. Now, I shall have to fight for my honor.
Take that, you scoundrel! Oh. Are you all right? It's nothing. I'm fine. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No. Are you mad at me? No, of course not. It's my stupid fault. Well, that'll teach you to go around slapping decent, God-fearing girls on the backside. <laughs> Let me have a look at it. No, no, it's only a scratch and a couple of splinters. And I didn't mean to. You know. Show me that. Now, oh, really, it's nothing. You know how it is, Hal. He who lives by the sword. Dies by the splinter, eh? <laughs> <laughs> There now. By the way, you owe Bianca for that beer. Good day, Teresa.
My God, what happened to you? You look like you've been assaulted. What news, neighbor? News? Have you not heard, girl? The empire is falling asunder under the hands of the king. How do you mean? King Sigismund of Hungary besieged Kuttenberg, and quite rightly too, in my opinion, because King Wenceslas rule is no rule at all. I am not the only one who would rather see his brother Sigismund on the throne. Such affairs have nothing to do with the likes of me. What I care about is how much grain we have to keep the mill making a living for us. Affairs of state are the concerns of royalty and nobility. You're quite right. A woman should not trouble her heart with political matters. You had better go back to your chores, though that you do not make your father angry, no? Got it for you right here. Good God, you look terrible. Did someone attack you? What news, neighbor? Have you heard that King Wenceslas's half-brother Sigismund and his foreign soldiers sacked Gutenberg? I expect he wanted to loot his brother's silver to pay for his campaign against his allies. That horde of Tartars and mercenaries he has doesn't come cheap. I heard something about it. Were many people killed? No. Those cowardly burghers surrendered to Sigismund without a fight and begged him for their lives on their knees in the mud. Why would King Sigismund turn against his own brother like that? He wants to depose him, that's why. He and those foreign lords of his think Wenceslas isn't paying enough attention to the problems of the Empire. Well, that's easy to say, but if you ask me, the whole world is going to hell. Not even the church is able to stick together, and now we have two popes? How is a person supposed to know what to believe in anymore? What do you think will happen? It's starting to stink like a few years ago. You were still a little girl then, so you wouldn't know, but Wenceslas had to yield to his own lords. Jobst of Moravia and his League of Lords even abducted Wenceslas and locked him up in Austria. Wenceslas's younger brother John and his cousin, Prokop of Moravia, got him released in the end. Well, at least some of his family remained loyal to him. Well, yes. Only John and Prokop had to make some concessions to the lords in Prague that the king didn't agree with, so they fell out with him in the end anyway. I don't reckon they'll be willing to come to his aid again. The more I hear about politics, the less sense it makes. I must get back to work. Greeting. Good morning. What else was it you wanted from me? You brought that beer to Henry then? I did. Uh-huh. And what did he say? He said thanks. That's about it. Huh. That's just like him. All right, but now I can tell you what I wanted. Fancy a walk in the woods? Right now? You want to court me in the shade of the pines? <laughs> no. I need to pick herbs for distilling schnapps. Henry's favorite. Henry's favorite? I see. Yes. I'd like to give it to him tomorrow. I might have known it'd be about Henry again. Well, you know how it is, Tess. Don't worry. You'll find a fellow one day. That's easy to say when you work in a tavern where there are fellas swarming around you all day. All I see at the mill are sacks of flour. 
What about Zbyshek? Zbyshek? I'd rather settle for a sack of flour. Hmm. I suppose. Your pa would never let Zbyshek have you anyway. Not long ago, when he had a few too many, I heard him say how he was going to get you the richest husband for miles around. Oh, pa. I hope that was just the beer talking. What herbs do you need? I've got almost everything, except belladonna. I know a clearing where the best plants grow. Belladonna? But that's deadly poison. It is, if you don't know what you're doing. But don't worry, I haven't poisoned anyone yet. Why don't you go and pick it yourself? Pa won't let me go on my own. They say a wolf was seen in the woods recently. A wolf? Hereabouts? So they say. But it was old Blaha who claimed to see it, and he's never sober. Still, I wouldn't want to go there alone. Couldn't your brother go with you? Adam? He'd shit himself if he saw a wolf. And besides, someone has to take care of the tavern. But he could lend us his bow. Good thinking, Tess. Oh, uh, thanks? So, you're going to borrow a bow from Adam, and then you want me to go with you to pick Belladonna in the woods? Actually, it's not entirely that simple. Adam won't lend me his bow. The last time he did, I broke the string. You'll have to get it from him. Anyway, I don't know how to shoot. But Stibor taught you, didn't he? Yeah, but that was a long time ago. It doesn't matter. If the wolf sees a bow, he won't come near us. So will you go and ask Adam? You know he's always liked you. Just give him a wink and the bow is yours. You might be able to do that with Henry, but me... Well, come now. You're as pretty as any lass in the province. And once you've got the bow, meet me on the bridge by the lake, all right? All right, I'll help you. But next time I want something from you, I don't want to hear any excuses about how you have to see Henry. Deal. You're an angel, Tess. God be with you. How are you getting on, neighbor? What is it, Teresa? Did your father send you? Does he need me to count his groschen for him again? What? Father wanted you to count groschen for him? Yes, not long ago. Quite a part he had to. I had to write it all down for him. I never knew the mill was that profitable. Hmm. That's interesting. How are you? I heard you're a really good archer. And that you've even got your own bow. Uh, yeah. I've got a bow. I made it myself. And I can hit the tree behind the tavern at 20 paces. Good heavens, that's amazing. Um, would you lend me your bow for a while? Lend my bow? To a girl? Well... I don't know, Teresa. What's wrong? Are you afraid I'll get up to some mischief with it? As you like. I don't expect that bow of yours would be up to much anyway. I'll get a better one somewhere else. My bow is perfect, I'll have you know. All right then. I'll lend it to you, and you'll see for yourself. I'll give you a few arrows, too. If you insist. Thanks.
God be with you, Teresa. Good morning. What's new in the village, Yarmila? Did you happen to meet that scholar who's been wandering around here since yesterday? He told me a wonderful story from olden times when Princess Libusa ruled. You've heard about Libusa, haven't you? Um, no. I don't know her. Who was she? Really? I thought everyone knew that story. She was a princess of bygone days who married a plowman, and he later became king. But she was a seer too, and she had all sorts of visions. And she founded Prague. That's interesting. What did the scholar tell you about her? About the Maiden's War. Would you like to hear it? Maiden's War? That sounds like a good story. Tell me about it. Girls were different back then. In pagan times, they could live... How did he put it? Free of the yoke of marriage. They bore arms like men and waged war. And they chose their own leader. And they even dressed like men. Can you believe it? What happened to them? He said they were so bold that they even built their own fortress where no man was allowed. They really did that themselves? Oh, I. And when the menfolk found out, they were envious. They came together in great numbers and built their own fortress in sight of the Maiden's one. What? Men and women lived separately in their own castles? They did, and they waged war on each other. The men were braver, but the women often outsmarted them. Naturally. How did it end up? In the end, they agreed on a truce. To celebrate peace, they feasted for three days, and each man took away one bride. Oh, I was expecting it to end... differently. I'd be happier too if the women won and could grab any husband they wanted. <laughs> A pretty picture indeed. Thanks for the story, it was quite inspiring. I must be going. Our fortress is still ruled by men. And they haven't learned to clean up after themselves. God bless. How are you? What news, neighbor? I'll be off to work soon. I'm taking turns with Dushek in the East Gallery. It's a tough job there. A cramped space and only one support so far. Hard going it is. That's why Nemoy is sending us in in shifts. Why aren't you resting at home if you'll be off to the mine soon? Uh, the wife's not well, so I'm doing what I can to lighten her load. Carrying water, picking up things at the market, peeling vegetables. You know yourself. That's very good of you. Ah, uh, well, when I'm sick, I'll send her to do my job in the mine. <laughs> Good health to you, Teresa. I've got the bow. We can get going. Great. Come with me.
victories await. There's a magpie's nest somewhere on that tree. Last time I was passing here, I saw that bird carrying something shiny to its nest. Listen, since you've got a bow, go on. <coughs> before the magpie comes back. I wonder what could be in that nest. I wonder what could be in that nest. <laughs> Greetings, Tess. What about that nest, Tess? Or do you want to keep going? I had a look in the nest. Yeah? And what did you find there? There was a ring in it. Looks like silver. Really? Holy Mother of God! I always wanted a silver ring. But... You're the one who shot it down. You can have it. You're giving it to me? Tess, you're the best friend ever. Thank you. I'll wear it to the dance this evening. Come on. Let's go and pick those herbs before it gets too late. I wonder what happened here. I saw it the last time. But no one reported anything in Scarlet. Do you think they skidded off the road and something devoured them? Maybe... Maybe a wolf? I thought you didn't believe in the wolf. I don't. I, I didn't. Better keep going. Come on. Tess, where are you going? We'll turn into the woods here and go uphill a bit. Follow me. It's a sweet little garden, isn't it? I never met anyone here. But it's always well kept. Probably some witch. Who else would keep a garden in the woods? It's a shame that witch doesn't grow belladonna, too. Did... Did you hear that? We'd better keep going, alright? We're nearly there. We'll go along the road here, 
and then back into the woods. God save Teresa. This is the place. I'll start picking, and you keep a lookout. Shouldn't I help you pick herbs too? No, I'll manage fine on my own. I dread you kept your eyes peeled for that wolf. What should I do if the wolf turns up though? You've got a bow, right? Don't think about it. Just shoot him. Besides, you've got Tinker. Although, I'm not sure he's any match for a wolf. How long will it take you? Just a short while. Don't worry. But while I'm at it, I'd like to pick enough to keep me going for a while. Just keep watch, and I'll tell you when I'm done. Alright, I'll keep watch. Just make it quick. I'd better pick as much as I can carry. Of God. It's the wolf! Teresa! There's a good doggy. That's my boy.
the Lord watch over you, Tess. I thought those rumors about a wolf were just idle talk. Idle talk, indeed. If I'd been alone, that beast would surely have devoured me. Did anything happen to you? <sighs> no, I'm fine. Thank God. It's a good thing you came along. Did you manage to pick enough herbs? Yeah, I did. Fortunately, I'll brew plenty of that liquor. Enough for you, too, as a reward. All right, thanks. That was a funny-looking wolf, don't you think? I reckon it was actually a wild dog. Wolf or dog? It was a monstrous beast. Henry will never believe this. What will you do now? I'll go back to work at the tavern. There's been quite enough excitement for one day. Thanks for coming with me, Tess. And don't forget to come and see me tomorrow. All right. God be with you, Teresa. God, you look terrible. Did someone attack you? Is there someone here who'd compete with me in archery? Sure. There's always arrows flying here. First, I'll explain the rules to you. You shoot 7, 13, or 21 arrows, depending on who you're shooting against. The straw surround is worth one point, the white ring, two, and the bullseye, three. Whoever finishes shooting first gets three extra points. The round ends when everyone has finished shooting, and whoever has the most points wins. It's the custom to wager on it, to make it more interesting, see? The better the archers you shoot against, the higher the stakes. All right. That seems straightforward. Just one more thing. Don't leave while the contest is underway, and never aim or shoot at anything but the target. Otherwise, you're out. Got it? Got it. How good are you with a bow, so I can find you a suitable opponent? I'm a beginner. Doesn't matter. At least you'll get a bit of practice. Beginners shoot seven arrows around. Splendid! Here's some arrows for you. But you can use your own if you want. Meanwhile, I'll round up the competition.
contest over, archers. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. How are you? Is there someone here who'd compete with me in archery? I'm sure someone can be found. How good are you with a bow, so I can find you a suitable opponent? I'm a beginner. Doesn't matter. At least you'll get a bit of practice. Beginners shoot seven arrows around. Splendid! Here's some arrows for you. But you can use your own if you want. Meanwhile, I'll round up the competition. Right, get ready. And surprise, surprise, the winner is Teresa here. My God, what happened to you? You look like you've been assaulted. How are things? As always, the sun rose and I expect it'll set again, God willing. You're the 
Miller's girl, aren't you? That's me, Teresa. I'm Julian. I'm a woodcutter. I don't think we've ever spoke before. Oh, you've got a lovely dog. What's his name? We call him Tinker because he always pricks up his ears when he hears the rattle of pots and pans. Pa got him as a tiny pup from some executioner who has lots of dogs. Imagine the executioner hadn't the heart to drown the pups. I suppose that's why he has so many dogs. <laughs> He's a fine fella. I'd love to have a dog like that to take on walks in the woods. Try asking around the village. Someone might have one for you. I asked the butcher. He's got a nice dog too. A, a good guard dog. Always barks at me when I go past. Only the butcher misunderstood what I was after. How's that? He thought I was after a dog for me. <laughs> That's horrible. I'd never eat dog meat. Such lovely, useful animals. Neither would I. Unless I was really starving. But there's plenty of folk who wouldn't think twice about it. I'm glad you stopped by for a chat. But I must get back to work now. Brothers and sisters, be merciful to a poor beggar, a grown daughter. Hey. My God, what happened to you? You look like you've been assaulted. How are things with you, Pigman? Pigman? I thought only the fellows at the mine called me that. Oh, sorry. Samuel sometimes mentions you, and I suppose I got used to it. Does it bother you? Ah, what's the difference? I'll never shake it anyway. Pigman the idiot who chopped off two of his toes with a pick. That's awful. People are always getting hurt in the mines. How did it happen exactly? Just not paying attention, I suppose. We were digging a tunnel and I simply hit my foot with a pickaxe. It went through my boot like a hot knife through butter. That must have hurt awfully. It hurt like hell. Now I have to stuff the tip of my boot with straw or I can't walk straight. I'd better be going. There's lots of work to be done. Be careful now, all right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, give me God's blessings.
greetings, Tess. Good morning. How are you doing, Jane? Ha! Huh. Have you seen that vagabond by the gate? Who do you mean? That stinking beggar who's always skulking around there. I swear he eyed me like a demon when I went past carrying water. There's something not right about that fella. Mark my words. The catchball ought to send him hopping. We've no need for beggars and idle good-for-nothings in Scarlet. You shouldn't talk about folk like that. We ought to be charitable to people in need. Need? What he needs is to get off his lazy arse and find work. God bless. What can I help you with? What's new in the village, good wife? Oh, all sorts, lass. Or nothing at all. Depends how you look at it. There's talk enough about everyone. What interests you? Have you heard anything about Henry and Bianca? I'm surprised the innkeeper lets that young fellow court his daughter. I don't think he's in any hurry to make an honest woman of her. But maybe she's keeping it secret from her pa. Have you heard anything about what's going on at the castle with Sir Radzik? I have. Blacksmith Martin is making him a new sword, and some engraver from far off is decorating it. No doubt it'll be a fine piece of work. Have you heard anything about Johanka? Well, it seems to me she's been making eyes at young Matthias. But the silly sod hardly notices she exists. You're friends with her, aren't you? You ought to know if there's any truth in it. I'm not going to talk about anyone behind their back. Not a word. Come now, lass. It's nothing against anyone. Just some friendly gossip between neighbors on the green. There's no malice in it. What have you heard about Fritz and Matthew? Hmm. <laughs> that pair. Carpenters, they call themselves. If you ask me, the only thing they'll be building is gallows for themselves. Any news about Master Fafar? Master Tobias is a good soul. That dance this evening is all his doing. He arranged it with Sir Radzik. I wonder why, though. Unless it's just to spread his wealth among the common folk. I wonder what people are saying about my brothers. Well, no offence, lass. But it's well known Samuel has no fondness for hard work. As for Stubor, uh, to tell the truth, no one's said anything much about him. Oddly enough. Are people saying anything about me? Ha! Let's talk about everyone, lass. But I can't go telling folk what others are saying about them. That wouldn't be right. Have you heard anything about your hunger? Well, it seems to me she's been making eyes at young Matthias. But the silly sod hardly notices she exists. You're friends with her, aren't you? You ought to know if there's any truth in it. Oh, aye. Your hunger has had her eye on Matthias since last harvest. Ah, I thought as much. I'll leave you to it, good wife. God bless. I'd like to have seen that. Well, at least he paid it back again.
How are you? Two? Rosemary and juniper. Rosemary? The best thing for hair. I heard it from a traveling merchant. He had it in Prague and he said it was delicious. All right, so I'll try it. And if he doesn't like it, I'll lock him in the hen coop. So he'll have a proper appetite next time. That'll ruffle his feathers for him. <laughs> Maybe you should have done that a long time ago. You're right there. Good morning. What's new with you, Antonia? Ah, uh, my husband keeps complaining about a cough and a running nose. With all the moaning he does, you'd think you ought to call the grave digger. And then, in the evening, he ups and off to the tavern. Men, they get a tickle in the throat and they think they're dying. But put a tank at a veil in front of them, all of a sudden, they're right as rain. <coughs> Day. What news, neighbor? What do you want, mill wench? Did your old man send you? I paid him for his flower last week. N no, <laughs> no, nothing like that. I was just passing the time of day. Then go and pass it with someone else. I'm not in the mood for women's gossip. Just like my old woman, by Christ. Where is she, anyway? Your wife, I mean. She's been away quite a long time, hasn't she? She went to see her family. Said her brother died. What's it to you, anyway? Oh, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Bah! She never said a word about him, and all of a sudden she goes rushing off all the way to Costanet saying he's kicked the bucket. Aye, she's been gone a long time. Far too long. Brother or no brother, I'll take my belt to her backside when she gets back. Anything else? Has it crossed your mind that maybe... She's not coming back? You're saying she's left me? What the fuck do you know about it? Clear off back to your mill. I've no time for your tales. I'd say that answers my question. Good day to you. Good day. What's new with you? Well, I went to see Pavlena's father to ask for her hand. He hummed and hawed for a bit, but in the end he gave his blessing. He didn't offer much of a dowry, but I don't care. The main thing is I can finally be with my Pavlena. 
will be wed in the summer. That's great. I wish you happiness. Jesus! <laughs> be with you. Will you teach me how to pick a lock? Sure. For a few groschen. What do you say to this? It will take more than that to persuade me. It's easy as fuck, unless you're all thumbs. Listen. You've got to find a spot where the lock catches and press on it. And only then can you turn it. Nice and light, though. No jerky movements. Like when you're caressing the girls. Uh, that is, um... I get it. Thanks. I need a couple of lock picks. <laughs> Teresa, what are you playing at? God, what happened to you? You look like you've been assaulted. Listen, Matthias. Fritz and Matthew have been looking for you. It seemed very important. You should hurry. Really? That's funny. I can't imagine what it's about. But if it's as urgent as you think, I'd better go and see what's up.
How are you, Teresa? Good morning. About Matthias. Yes? Tell me everything. I've brought you his dice. I knew you'd do it. Thanks. This is great. I'll bring it to him. Keep your fingers crossed for me. Come right up, good people. Herbs for your kitchen, as well as health-giving decoctions. God be with you, Matthias. Listen, I found this dice. I believe it's yours. My dice? But how? I thought it was in my trunk. No, I found it outside. It was lying on the ground by the tavern, where the dance is going to be this evening. That's odd. I could have sworn I put it away. Can I have it back? People will be dancing all around there. They'd trample it into the ground for sure. It's a good thing I spotted it. Although, I don't suppose I'll be dancing this evening. No one's asked me. I see. Uh, the dice, please? I'd put on a very pretty dress, and after the dance, I prepare the boy who danced with me, if anyone asked me. I'll take you, all right, and you'll give me my dice back. Really? You'd take me? Yeah. All right. Thanks. I'll see you this evening. Right. Sure. Wait! May the what Lord watch dice? over you, Tess. For the love of God. God save you. Hey, Fritz and Matthew didn't want me at all. What the hell are you playing at? Uh, they're just fooling with you, I suppose. You know what What's they're going like. On there? Huh. Someone's trying to make a fool out of me, all right. <laughs> God be with you, Teresa.
sign of the blacksmith. Where can he be? Jesus Christ, your clothes are a mess. Did you fall down or something? Father sent me to pick up nails, but there's no one at the fort. Aye, uh, sorry lass. Martin had to go to the castle to talk to Sir Radzik. He's to forge a sword for his lordship. Oh, I see. And has he made the nails for Pa? I'm afraid he hasn't had time on account of that sword. But if you come tomorrow, he'll surely have them for you. I'll remind him this evening. All right, I'll stop by tomorrow. Do that, dear. Oh, and by the way, the girls were looking for you. Actually, I already talked to them, but thanks for letting me know. Not at all. Oh, and another thing, Teresa. Have you seen Henry around anywhere? If he helped his father out more at the forge, there'd be no shortage of nails. Henry? I haven't seen him at all today. <laughs> that lad is worse than a wild tomcat. Always running off somewhere. I'm sure he'll turn up soon. Aye, when he gets hungry. Teresa, I'm glad to see you. God save Teresa. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. about any silver. I'm a miller. Flour is what I know about. 
If someone's stealing silver from the mines, why don't you talk to the Mintmaster about it? Well, we did. He was the one that brought it up. It's our job to ask everyone who lives nearby if they saw anything suspicious. Then good luck with that. Because in case you haven't noticed, everyone around here lives near the mines. Aye, but some live closer than others. And then there's also the fact that... How to put it? We're asking you because, well, you're a miller, right? Oh, I see. Since I'm a miller, I must be a crook. Is that it? No, but you know what they say. Aye, they say you lot can hardly find your own asses. Never mind a thief. You're keeping me from my work, young fellas. So if we're done here, farewell and good luck. All right, Miller. If you should happen to hear anything, let us know. How are you, Teresa? I went for those nails, but the blacksmith is with Sir Radzik today. All right, leave it till tomorrow then. No hurry. Right now, I need something else. Quick. What's up? The guards were here asking around. They said someone's been stealing silver from the mines. Can you go and tell Stebor? He went to check the fish trap below the bridge. Why? What has Stebor got to do with stolen silver? Uh, uh, look, just talk to him about it, all right? Mary, mother of God. You and your secrets. All right, I'll go and talk to Stebor. Pa sent me. The guards were here, asking about Silver going missing from the mines. Oh shit. Oh shit. All right. All right. Listen, Tess. I need your help. Not so fast. First, tell me what the hell is going on. All right. Look. How can I put it? Spit it out. Otherwise, you're on your own. All right. Pa came up with a nice little job. It's quite easy to sneak silver ore out of the mines, and he found this wealthy fella who offered to buy it. So, well, it does lead back to us. The missing silver is ours. Merciful God! I need your help, Teresa. Sweet Jesus. You fellas haven't the sense you were born with. But family is family. Thanks, Tess. I'm sorry to drag you into it, but I can't manage it on my own. Where did you hide it? That's the thing. It's at the bottom of a flooded shaft. Samuel was working there before. You dragged Samuel into it too? No, no. Samuel knows nothing about it. So why don't you just go and get it? I don't know how to get to it. For heaven's sake, Stebor. Do you know where it is or not? Yes, but you see, when I was carrying it out, they stopped me. I was standing on this wooden walkway and I dropped it over the edge so they wouldn't catch me with it. And now I don't know how to get to it. All I know is it made a splash when it fell. And how are we supposed to find it? Go crawling through the whole mine? No, I've got an idea. Samuel knows that area. He he'll know how to get to the shaft. Oh no, Stebor, forget it. You're not going to drag Samuel into your dangerous games. Christ, no. What do you take me for? All he has to do is draw a map. And we'll do the rest. Wait. I want to ask you something. How did you get mixed up in this? 
Not long ago, I saw Pa hauling a sack of silver ore. I kept asking about it, and in the end, he had to tell me what was going on. God almighty, the king's silver? If you have to steal, couldn't you take something that wouldn't cost you your lives as well as your souls? Around here? Like what? Cabbages? Why are you doing it? You're not going to mint your own coin, surely? Of course not. We just sell it to someone, but Pa deals with that. I don't know much about it. Why are you helping him? Well, he always gives me some of the money he makes from it. Money won't be much use to either of you on the pyre. Where do you take the silver? Pa takes care of that. Someone comes to pick it up. Who does? Some slimy kind of fella. I don't know what his name is. He serves some lord, but I don't even think Pa knows who that is. That's all I want to know for now. Are you sure it's the same shaft where Samuel was working? Definitely. There's no other flooded shaft in the mine. Remember when everyone was talking about how they hit a spring and had to abandon it? All right, Stebor. I'll go to Samuel and get the map from him. Have you got something I can give him to draw it with? Here. Give him this. I try to get it from him without giving the game away. Otherwise, Pa will have a fit if he finds out. I'll do what I can. Where is Sammy now? Where do you think? I saw him heading for the fish pond, as usual, to avoid work. Once you have it, come and meet me at Wenceslas Corridor on the hill. I'll be waiting there. What the... I don't know you, unless my memory deceives me. Where are you from, and what are you doing here? Have you not noticed? I'm saving lives. I came from far away, Sasau, to avert great misfortune. My god, what misfortune? All the misfortune of the world, my dear. 
for misfortune walks not over mountains, but over men. I have artifacts that will avert mine cave-ins, swarms of locusts, bloody rain, and flaming swords. Not to mention, say, unhappy love, perhaps. Do they really work? Have you ever seen bloody rain? No, I haven't. There, you see. I have remedies for all woes, and an answer for everything. Maybe that kind of talk might invoke those woes. Have you ever heard it said that no one can be a prophet in his own land? Um, yes. What's that got to do with anything? Well, here am I, far from my own land. What are these peculiar goods you're selling here? Things that bring good luck. Or bad, if that's what's needed. What are you after? No, wait, don't tell me. I, I know just what your heart desires. I have here an amulet that will ensure your safety and your whole families forever. Girls like you are always keen to have one. Really? An amulet can do that? Most assuredly. Ah, but unfortunately, I, I just sold the last one. However, I do have something even better. What is it? A map. Have you heard of the Scarlet's treasure? Scarlet's treasure? No. My dear child, you ought to ask your parents about it. Everyone knows about the Scarlet's treasure. But no one knows that I have a map to it. Then why don't you dig it up yourself? <laughs> Me? A spiritual man? <laughs> Please. I have no interest in worldly wealth. You can have it for only a few groschen. No thanks. I've no time to look for treasure. Too much work to do, you know. How's the work going, Master Potter? Just fine, until you came along. If you think I've time to waste an idle chatter, I've work to do. Why do you think I live here, away from town? I live here so no one bothers me with stupid questions. Well, forgive me for greeting you politely as I passed by. Next time I need a pitcher, I'll go to the Potter by the river, so as not to waste your valuable time. Good day to you. Guaranteed to ward off ghosts. About that map. Yes. Have you changed your mind? If it leads to treasure, as you say, how could I refuse? That's not enough. But do come back when you've got more to offer.
daleko za dědina, nedaleko hodonína, je tam studenka kamená a v ní vodenka studená, vodenka studená. Kdybych já tu vodu píjal, věru bych se dobře mýval. Nechodíval bych do šenku, nešidíval bych šenkérku. Uh. God almighty, has something happened to you? Did someone steal your fancy clothes? Why aren't you at work? I was given some time off. Time off? How come? I smashed my foot with the pickaxe. Every mother of God! Are you alright? I'm fine. It was just a pretense. I needed a break. Really, Sammy? One day you'll really get hurt, and then no one will believe you. So, are they biting? Well, so far, no. But there's still plenty of time before evening. Sammy, I need something from you. Oh, Tess, I just got ready for fishing. Don't worry, you don't have to go anywhere. Remember that mine shaft where you used to work before it got flooded? Yeah, it was a deep one. We went down that morning, and we were up to our knees in water. Master Faithfar said that always happens when you dig deeper than the drainage at it. We dug a well to slow it down, but even that wasn't enough. Do you think you could draw me a map of the way there? Why? What on earth would you want that for? You'll just have to trust me, Sammy. It's very important. It's... a family problem. I might have known it'd be some Miller intrigue again. It's no wonder the folks say the things they do about us. Give me that and I'll draw it for you. I don't even want to know any more about it. Thanks. That will help me a lot.
your livestock. About that map? Yes. Have you changed your mind? If it leads to treasure, as you say, how could I refuse? What do you say to this? More! What about this? That's not enough. Here you have it. Happy hunting! <coughs> hear ye, hear ye! Relics of the rarest kind, blessed by the Pope himself, and guaranteed... <coughs> God almighty, has something happened to you? Did someone steal your fancy clothes?
with you, Teresa. God save you, Tess. I'm glad to see you.
How are you, Teresa? Got it? I got that map from Samuel. What now? Great! Well, first, we've got to get into the mine. But that fool Nimoy is keeping watch. It'd be best if we split up. I'll get rid of him, and you can sneak in. I want to ask you something. Why do I have to go inside? Why don't you do it? Well... Remember when we used to play hide-and-seek? Yeah. You could never find me. And you always found me immediately, because I was useless at hiding. Yeah. You always had something sticking out. Exactly. You're right. Best if I do it. For sure. 
There won't be many people inside now. Most of the lads will be outside eating. But even so, watch out. Tell me again where I can find that sack. It's somewhere in that flooded shaft. It's a good thing I was on that walkway when they stopped me. Otherwise, I'd have had nowhere to drop it. Only now, you have to get down there. Who caught you? And how did you get out of it? The miners, of course. I told him I was looking for Samuel, but I still got a hard time from the guards for being there at all. That's all. All right. Let's get it over with, then. Once I get rid of him, you sneak inside past the bushes. And take a torch with you. It's as black as pitch in there. Just make sure no one sees you, though. Good luck, Tess. sideways on her. Aye, the coin-grabbing bastard thinks he'll marry her off to some lord. Ha-ha, <laughs> you're right there, like a rich man would marry a real witch. <laughs> I wouldn't say no to her. Huh, you wouldn't say no to anything in a skirt. Neither would you, but at least I'm not ashamed to admit it. Hey, who's there?
My, that's a hell of a drop. Better be careful. Oh, that's cold. But this must be the place Stebor was talking about. Now to find that wooden walkway. in here. walkway. The sack must be here somewhere.
Hey! Hey! You've no business here. Clear off, or you'll be sorry. I've got the silver. What now? Thank heavens! You've no idea what a relief that is. I knew you could do it. Take it to par for me, please. Good day, Teresa. I found the silver in the mine. Not so loud. Oh, good work, lass. Leave it here, and I'll take care of everything. Thanks. I'd like to say I'm glad to be of help, but I'm not, Pa. It could have ended badly for everyone. Very, very badly. Tis. You know I only want the best for all of you, don't you? The best for us? How long do you think you can get away with this? Do you think your luck will hold out forever? If they caught me with that silver, we'd all burn on the pyre together. Don't say that, Tess. I haven't finished. What would happen then, Father? Samuel would be left alone in the world? Or he'd be executed too? God forbid. Do you think that never occurred to me? There's not a day goes by I don't think of it. Do you all want to spend the rest of your lives breaking your backs in the mill just to have enough to eat? Your mother wouldn't have wanted it for you either. Pa. Pah. <sighs> you're, uh, you're right. Sorry. I promise we'll be more careful. That will have to do me, I suppose. What about that surprise you promised me this morning? Well, I won't keep you in suspense any longer. Besides, you deserve it, after helping us with that silver. So, I had a dress made for you in Ratte. A very fine dress, indeed. You'll be the prettiest lass in the village. A new dress, Pa. But... I don't understand. Why? Well, you know, you're not a little girl anymore. You're a young woman now, mature and clever. Cleverer than me, for sure. You surely don't want to live here at the mill forever. Samuel's uh, able to take care of himself, and after all that's happened, you don't want to end up with the kind of life me and Stiebel have. What is it, Pa? Why did you buy me that dress? Look, Teresa, you're old enough to be married. It's about time we did something about it. What are you saying? I don't understand. I don't want to get married yet. Oh, my little girl. Matrimony is a gift from God. Yes, but... But I don't have a suitor. Oh, but you do. A very good one, too, believe me. What? You've offered my hand to someone? Who is it? Don't worry. He's a decent man. A nice man. He's even close to the nobility. And he's rich. He'll take care of you. There's going to be a fete at the tavern this evening. Sir Radzi gave permission for a pig roast, and... Who is it? You can just have a chat. 
dance a little and who knows, you might like him. Are you going to tell me who it is? It's Chief Engineer Tobias. Tobias Fafer? Aye, that's right. Are you pulling my... What are you thinking of, Father? Vafar has one foot in the grave. Oh, come now. Why didn't you ask me? You couldn't simply let me know what you were planning? Uh, Teresa, uh, listen. It's all Teresa do this, Teresa go and cook, Teresa clean up. And now, for good measure, Teresa go and marry an old fossil. Does nobody care what I want? Well, of course we care. And you're right. I should have told you. You're damned right you should. Good God, I never thought you'd make such a fuss about it. It's the way things are done. Try and see it from my point of view. Tobias Fafar is a very well-to-do suitor. You'll find none better in Scullitz. Listen, we can talk it over, but the decision is mine to make. You've got to think of your future, Teresa. Master Fafar is a respected man. And that respect will extend to his wife and children, too. Children? For heaven's sake, lass, don't be so naive. You were born a girl, and raising a family is what God made you for. Unless you'd prefer the convent. Go to the tavern this evening and let Master Fafer spend a nice pile of groschen on you. You'll have a great time, you'll see. <laughs> Show me that dress, then. It's in the trunk here under the window. Once you've done all your chores, get dressed up and off you go. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. That's a good boy. That's my boy. <coughs> All right, Teresa. Time to grow up. Put on that lovely dress. And go and meet your groom. Well, there's no point in dragging it out. 